Hi everyone. Today uh, we're going to talk about a topic which is really, really close to my heart. It's averages versus medians. Now this is a mistake all of us make in the product ecosystem. It's a mistake that everyone makes around the different kinds of products that they make, which is we tend to favor averages instead of percentiles, instead of medians, instead of quartiles and deciles. And this is disastrous for anyone who wants to do any kind of product thinking. I would take it one step further and say averages were probably the worst thing that ever happened to the product ecosystem. Such terrible decisions are made because of people's preferences for average that there is no coming back from that. So today we're going to talk about a bit, a bit sort of look at the, the mathematical reason for why I'm saying averages are bad, but actually then take a few examples from different kinds of products and see why it would make more sense for you to look at a percentile distribution, look at your medians, look at your 25th uh, percentile, your first quartile, your second quartile, your third quartile, right? So let's jump into it, um, right? So averages and medians, that's what we're going to talk about today. Now let's take an example of where averages perhaps make sense and perhaps don't make sense. Now suppose I was going to find the average of my family's height. So I have my son who's around six years old and he's about four feet tall then there is my wife right uh, she'd hate me for drawing her this way but just imagine for a second that there's my wife and she's about five feet six inches tall and then there is me the the, the giant in the family uh right uh, again not doing much favors to draw myself like that and i'm about six feet two inches tall right so so this is this is the family, right? Now, does it make sense for me to average out the height of my family? If we do that, we'd realize that the average would fall somewhere here, right? Which is my son, who's just four feet tall, would bring down the average height, right? And it would look like we are a family of, let's see, 24 inches plus 6 inches plus 30 and 14 44 inches so 15 inches more so we would all come across as people who are around 5 feet 3 inches tall right that's the average height of my family now does this make sense uh, when we talk about averages and it, it really doesn't right averaging out over 3 people doesn't give you any insights it doesn't tell you any way of thinking about this family is this fam does this family have a lot of tall people does this family have short people right how tall is this kid going to be given his parents height when he or she grows up and this is the kind of mistakes that people make now you would say hey looking at this example there was only a sample set of three we shouldn't have taken an average but to be truly honest it could have been a family of 100 people right and you would have done this exercise and it would still have been a useless exercise because averaging out heights across a family doesn't make any sort of sense right now let's take an example where say averaging out heights would have made sense right so let's again look at a classroom of kids let's say grade one kids right who are all between the age of five years 10 months to about six years and six months right and you know in this kid you have you have 10 kids some are you know tall some are you know some are taller some are not as tall and then you average out the height and it gives you a sense because you know these are kids of a similar age group you know they're growing up in a similar city they have similar access to nutrition and then if you averaged out their height and the height came to about three feet ten inches you'd be like okay this is great you know this this tells us something that on an average grade one kids in this particular school uh, you know have this height but 
does it tell you anything about the tallest kids in class or about the shortest kids in class? Does it tell you anything about the distribution, right? And this is where, while the average gives you a good sense of understanding how tall should grade one kids be, maybe if you understood median, which is the middle kid in this class, so we said 10 kids, so the middle kids, the fifth and the sixth kids, what were their heights? Which would tell you that, hey, half the kids in this class are below three feet, eight inches. Now look, your median here is smaller than your average, right? So which tells you half the kids in class are actually below three feet, eight inches, but the average is three feet, 10, which is telling you that there are some kids in this class who are really tall. So there is a kid who's four feet, four inches, right? And he is skewing the average and maybe the ninth kid is uh, is another tall uh, kid who's say four feet, three inches. And these two kids are skewing up uh, the average, bringing the average up, but actually more than half the kids and maybe even the eighth kid is only four feet tall, right? So then you realize that, oh, okay, so most kids are below four feet, but there are these two kids who are incredibly tall. And this is why Averages in certain situations do give you an interesting data point, right? It tells you what should be the case, right? It, it, it tells you how, uh, how the different variables, the different, the different uh, types of people who are similar to each other in some way in this particular case based on their grade, their age, their upbringing. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily tell you how your data is distributed. Uh, there's a there's a report going around uh, which talks about the average number of let's bring up a pen which talks about the average number of engineers at unicorns, right? Companies in the Indian tech ecosystem which hit valuations of greater than dollar one billion, right? And it essentially shows like a graph on this side, uh, you know, there is company one, there's company two, there's company three, and the number of engineers they have, and the number of, uh, and their valuation. So one company is 35 billion, and then there is a company which is 20 billion, right? And it says, hey, you know, this company has 35 billion uh, valuation, but you know what, per billion, it only has 160 engineers, whereas this company, which is, you know, valued at 20 billion, right? So valued far less, but has, you know, has 300 engineers per billion. Now, what is this really telling me? Is, is this is this revealing in any way about how many engineers does it take uh, to become a unicorn? Is it is it giving me any deep insight into the ecosystem? Not really. If they really wanted to do this analysis, they should have said, uh, you know, two hit the very first ah that's a crazy pen to hit the very first billion dollar what was the size of the product engineering design and analytics team you know the people who built the product you know and this is only true if it's a pure product play what about your sales org right what about your marketing org so just counting the number of engineers and its relationship with valuation is not giving anyone any insights. What they could have done is, hey, how many people did it take to hit the first billion dollar in valuation? And then the spread of that, the distribution of that would have been an interesting thing to say. And again, here you should not look at average. You should look at the median that half of them got to this number of $1 billion valuation, say with a team size of 350 people and that the highest one right which is say the hundredth percentile right took 1000 people right whereas the one the, you know which reached 1 billion valuation the least number of people only had 50 people right and this would have given us some insights and again we would have divided these companies into the type of companies you would have said hey some of them are b2b saas companies and some of them are uh, b2c companies they are in edtech they are in uh, healthcare they are in different spaces right 
So which is why it's very critical to compare apples to apples, right? You want to compare things which are similar to each other and then perhaps averages make sense. But to be truly honest, even an average there is not really giving you a very good sense of how your data is distributed, right? Now, we've looked at examples outside of product. Now let's look at examples from inside of product management and you know on the kind of products that we run on a day-to-day -day basis, right? So let's say you run a, a content business, right? You run a, a content-based app where people come and consume content. Let's say the content happens to be video. So you are a short video consumption app, right? And one of the metrics that you've defined, which is very useful for you, is the watch time that is the amount of time people spend looking at videos on your product per user. So we're gonna draw a graph where on the y-axis we have watch time per user and on the x-axis we have the user base itself. So, you know, this is 50% of the users, this is 75, and this is 100%, this is 25%, right? Now, in most reports, what would be reported would be, hey, the average watch time per user is 30 minutes per day, right? Watch time per user per day. And this number is 30 minutes. And everyone looks at this and goes, wow, people spend on an average 30 minutes in your product. And that's that, that's phenomenal, right? Uh, Again, a great way of fooling yourself and thinking that, oh, users are spending a lot of time in my product. Now, let's actually look at the percentile distribution of watch time, right? And your graph would most likely be something like this. where the area under this curve is the same, but here's the interesting part. More than half your users spend maybe 15, less than 15 minutes per day watching videos in your product. In fact, even till the 75th percentile, people only spend maybe 18 minutes per day in your product, right? So your bulk of your watch time is actually coming from this segment, which is, you know, your, 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 your top 20% is essentially accounting for all your watch time. Now, if you kept thinking that, hey, the metric that is important to me is this 30 minutes per day, then, you know, you are going to make decisions based on, hey, I have to improve this 30 minutes a day. And you are looking at all your, your entire user base as one single homogenous user base. Whereas in reality, you have a lot of problems. A bunch of users actually come into your product and hardly spend any time. A quarter of your users are not spending any time in your product, right? In fact, three fourths of your user base is not spending enough time. So the kind of things you would do for your users here, right, the bottom quartile versus the first half of your users and even below 75th percentile are very different from what the things that you would do for your top 20%. And maybe you don't need to do much right now for your top 20%. They're already doing the bulk of your watch time, right? The area under this curve, right? The area under this curve is the same as this average into 100, right? Like average into the number of users. But most of it is coming from a very small set of users. And this is this is the thing. This is This is where looking at averages and using that to make product decisions is a really, really bad idea, right? Uh, another, another example that we could potentially take, uh, which comes, uh, so this, this, this is where, you know, product people make a mistake, but you know what? Engineers don't make this mistake. If you had a performance team, right? So suppose your performance team is trying to improve the app open time. Right, and 
you know, if you have a performance team in your uh, in, in your company, they would tell you that what they're measuring is how much time does it take for the app to open? So which is the first paint to come, essentially the first set of elements to start being visible to your users. And they will never me measure averages, right? Any smart engineer would tell you what they are looking at is P50. So the 50th percentile, and they say, hey, for half the users, this takes about five seconds, right? But your P90 is 17 seconds. And this is where the trouble is. So about 10% of your users take longer than seven, it, it takes longer than 17 seconds for them, for the app to actually open up. And you know what? P99, the top 1% of your users take as much as 60 seconds. Now, why is this important? Why is this percentile distribution important? Imagine you're a very large app. Imagine you have 100 million monthly active users, which means 1% of your user base is about 1 million people take longer than 60 seconds to open up their app, right? And for more than half your users, the app opens up in five seconds and you know you could say, okay, this is, this is still decent, but 10%, more than 10 million of your monthly active users take longer than 17 seconds, right? So when you're, when you're looking at solving issues like performance, right, of your product, how well is your product performing? You look at percentiles because this is what helps you figure out how to solve problems. Things you would do here are very different than the things you would do here and are very different from the things you would do here, right? So engineers have al always been doing it. So it's, it's very strange that product managers and analysts and business people have started thinking about averages more than, more than percentile distributions and medians. So one of the things that you can do immediately is say no to averages and start looking at, at least start looking at your medians, right? And start looking at deciles, which is divide your data into 10, 10 percentiles or start looking at quartiles, right? So you look at 25th percentile, 50th percentile would be your median you look at your 75th percentile and maybe you look at your 90th and 99th percentile, right? Uh, so this is, this, is how, this is what you can do to ensure that you are not sort of missing out the insights that your data is giving you and uh, you're not making decisions which are really bad for your product. Thank you. I uh, hope this made sense. Uh, do send in your questions and uh, more such videos uh, coming up soon on Playbooks.